Canon EOS Rebel T6i hands-on review. The EOS Rebel T6i and EOS Rebel T6s are nearly identical cameras that use the same internal components, but cater to slightly different users. The T6s has some cosmetic differences and advanced features, such as a status LCD, manual exposure control, digital zoom, and enhanced grip. But in terms of photo and video quality, results are the same. The following review is about both cameras, but we've noted the differences where appropriate. Canon's EOS Rebel series cameras are not only popular entry-level consumer DSLRs, but they are also strong performers. The latest Rebel is not one, but two very similar models, the EOS Rebel T6i and T6s. Both use a brand new 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor the highest currently available form Canon and are the first Rebel models to come with Wi-Fi and near-field communication, NFC. The T6i, $750, body only, is a natural evolution of the T5i, which remains in the lineup, as a lower price model, but what do you get for $100 more? in the T6S. The T6S uses the same body, but has a few more enthusiast-centric features, like a status LCD. In today's uber-competitive interchangeable lens camera ILC, market, can Canon's Rebel stay on top? And are the T6S extra features worth the cost? Features and Design DSLRs generally all look alike, and Canon certainly didn't break the mold with this pair. While the T6i resembles previous entry-level Rebels, the T6s looks more like an enthusiast camera, such as the EOS 70D. The key reason for the latter is the monochrome LCD on the top deck that gives you a quick glance of your settings and status. This handy readout is designed for more experienced shutterbugs, so Canon created this Rebel for that customer who wants advanced options but doesn't want to drop more than $1,000 for an enthusiast DSLR someone who's graduated past entry level but doesn't want a heavier, more advanced model. The T6S also has loads of tweaks for customizing your images, while the T6i is for casual photographers. Even though, specs-wise, the pair is very similar, the T6S feels much more substantial and weighs 0.4 ounces more, you won't notice it. The T6S grip is a bit wider and overall it just feels better. Exterior measurements are identical 5.2 x 4 x 3.1 inches, without a lens, and weight is around 20 ounces with battery and card. If you're stepping up from an older Rebel and you already have lenses, you can purchase either camera as body-only options. For new buyers, the T6i comes with two kit lens options, and the T6s has one. For $850, that's MSRP, so do some price comparison, you can get the T6i with an EFS 18 to 55mm f 3.5-5.6 STM lens. You can also opt for the EFS 18 to 135mm f 3.5-5.6 is STM package for $1,049, this is also the kit lens offered with the T6S, for $1,149. Quick Primer, EFS is Canon's lenses made for APS-C sensors, is stands for image stabilization, and STM refers to the built-in stepping motor for noise-free zooms when shooting videos. The difference between the two lenses is focal range the 18 to 135 mm gives you longer zoom. If you were to buy the lenses on their own, $250 and $550, respectively, it's a $300 difference. So, in our opinion, it makes more sense to go with the longer lens if the budget allows, splurge further for the T6S if you can swing it. If you already own Canon lenses or you want something different, skip the kit options. Oftentimes, 
warehouse stores, like Costco, will offer a two-lens kit, so look out for those. We're happy Canon is using a new 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMO sensor. With photos, the Rebel is peppy. Both cameras have the Canon F mount on the front, which is compatible with not just the loads of Canon F and EFS options, but also the many third-party lenses out there, lenses are a Canon strong point. There's also lens release and depth of field preview button, to help determine how much of the scene you want in focus, a remote sensor on the grip, and a red eye reduction slash self timer lamp. The top decks are where you'll really notice they are two separate cameras. As mentioned, the T6S has a LCD readout on the right side. To accommodate the LCD, the mode dial, with locking mechanism, which the T6I doesn't have, and off slash on slash movie lever were shifted to the left side. There are buttons for ISO, AF area selection, and shutter, as well as a jog wheel, but they are all slightly repositioned, the T6S has a button for illuminating the mono LCD, while the T6I has a Wi-Fi indicator. Both cameras offer the same modes, Smart Auto, PASM, Scene, 5 options, Sports, Macro, Landscape, Portrait, Creative Auto, Special Effects, and Flash Off. The rear panels are fairly similar with 0.82x optical viewfinders and 3-inch variangle touchscreen color LCDs, rated 1,040K dots. LCD brightness is generally good but you'll want to crank up the brightness in bright daylight when using live view. The touch screen makes it easy to move through the menus and make changes. The viewfinder, while perfectly usable, is rather small when compared to higher-end DSLRs. While you'll find the same buttons and controls in both the T6S and T6I, where they are located is slightly different. But the T6S has a quick control dial around the four-way controller, the T6I does not. The right has the SD card slot, and the left has two sealed panels, one for HDMI and USB slash AV digital out, and the other for a remote and optional mic. On the bottom is the tripod screw mount, NFC tag, and battery compartment. The supplied power pack is good for 550 shots without using the flash, 440 if you use it 50% of the time. This will get you through a day's shooting but it's less than a true enthusiast DSLR, it's better than most mirrorless cameras. The plus side is that for casual users, there's no need to pack a spare. Compared with actual enthusiast DSLRs, the T6S has similar attributes. The top monochrome LCD, quick control dial, and mode dial locking lever to prevent inadvertent changes while shooting. But enthusiast DSLRs have tougher construction and some are weather resistant. Also, they have larger viewfinders and other pro-centric features and performance, like faster shutter speeds and stronger autofocus systems. While the T6S embodies the spirit of an enthusiast DSLR, at heart it's still an entry-level rebel. Warranty Canon offers a typical one-year warranty for parts and labor. Canon offers an extended warranty plan, called Care Pack Plus, that covers accidental damage and live support. The T6S and T6I may be entry level, but they are still expensive. Canon has a good service program and may be well worth the investment if you're prone to accidents. Performance, Specs, and Use After sticking with its 18 megapixel APS-C CMO sensor for what seemed like forever, we're happy Canon has finally upgraded the Rebels to a new 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMO sensor. Canon is now on the same playing field, sensor-wise, as Nikon and Sony, which have had 24 megapixel APS-C ILCs for a while now. The latest Rebels are also using the newer Digic 6 image processor, so the cameras are quite responsive, 5 frames per second. 
The hybrid CMOS AF3 autofocusing is also speedy and we had no focus issues during testing. However, shutter speed tops out at 1 slash 4000, and the number of autofocus points is much less, 19, compared to 1 slash 8051 points of the $1199, body only, Nikon D7200 Enthusiast DSLR. We used the pair simultaneously, for several weeks, shooting a wide variety of stills and videos. Photographic results for the duo are really quite fine with that natural canon feel that we've always appreciated. Colors are as accurate as can be, with a richness that every shutter bug will like. Photo quality results, overall, were outstanding. Photography continues to be a rebel strong point, but video, while fine, could be better. We preferred shooting with the T6S and the 18 to 135mm stabilized zoom and better grip, but the more affordable T6i also delivers the photographic goods with a basic 18 to 55mm lens. You can't go wrong with either, and it all depends on your level of comfort. Casual. Go with the T6i. More of an enthusiast. The T6S is the pick. Note that the T6S offers digital zoom, but we'd rather use true optical zoom. The Rebels have native ISO ranges of 100 to 12,800, but the T6S can be expanded to 25,600. Overall, the T6S has many more customization options than the T6i, but as far as sensitivity results are concerned both are solid. Even with the 24MP sensor, there was little noise at ISO 3200 and 6400. You really have to enlarge your images to see digital artifacts, so you should have no problems shooting in dim light, especially if you have a wide open, f 2.0, prime lens. Conclusion The T6i and T6s capture really fine photos and acceptable videos. Photography continues to be a Rebel strong point, but video could be better. The new Rebels are more evolutionary models than anything radically different from the T5i. Still, these are very good cameras and should sell well. Our preferred pick is the T6s, but the T6i will be good enough for many photographers making the move from an older DSLR or compact point and shoot. That said, there's loads of competition in this space including the Sony A6000 and Nikon D5500. You won't go wrong with the T6i slash T6s but you might want to look closely at the competition if you don't already have a collection of Canon glass.